Hi, welcome back to my kitchen. Today we're going to talk about tomatoes. The other day I was making a salad and I needed some tomatoes. So I sent Larry to the store and I must have forgotten to say a couple of tomatoes because he, ever the overachiever, came home with a Sam's Club size box of 10 tomatoes. I don't know about you, but if I buy three or four tomatoes, I'm lucky to get through them all before they start to spoil. So here I was with 10 tomatoes and trying to figure out what to do with them. I could have used all of them at once in a marinara sauce, but this being an ongoing problem with me not being able to use up tomatoes, I decided to challenge myself to come up with a different tomato side dish every day until all the tomatoes were gone. While you're watching, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Our first recipe is a garden salad. Let's get started. Let's start by cutting up our lettuce. Here I've got butter crunch lettuce, Paris Koss lettuce, some dandelion greens. We're just gonna chop those up and mix them together for some mixed greens. Then we'll take a red onion, cut it in half, and then take a few very thin slices from one half. And then we will cut those thin slices into three pieces for just some smaller bite of onion. If you like onion a lot, go ahead and leave them big or put entire slices on there. Let's get those added to the bowl. And then we're gonna add our cucumber. The cucumber here is an English cucumber. Uh, the skin is nice and tender, so I did not peel my cucumber. You may want to peel your cucumber if it's got a waxed skin or a thicker skin. But we're just gonna cut this up into thin slices, just as, as many as you want. I end up with maybe half to two thirds of a cup of cucumber slices here. So go ahead and get those added to the bowl. And then let's add a little more color to the salads. I'm taking a, a red cabbage and slicing it really thin and then we'll take those thin slices and then give them a, just a rough chop so that they will crumble and distribute throughout the salad. You're adding a nice extra nutrition punch to your salad as well as beautiful color. And now the star of the show, the tomatoes. I usually just kind of wedge around the core when I'm cutting up a tomato, but you can also just cut that core out to start with. And we're going to give those a quick slice and then turn them to the side and then just dice. For this salad, I'm just doing like a, a quarter half inch dice. And it doesn't really matter what size you do, just you want to have them all approximately even sized throughout your salad. Okay, and the second tomato is just about done. We're going to give that a quick dice. Nice even pieces, more or less the same size for each one. Then we'll get that second tomato added to the bowl. All right, let's give the cutting board a quick wipe. And then we'll toss the salad, get everything evenly distributed throughout the bowl. Look at those beautiful colors. The reds, the purples, the vibrant greens. It's a lovely salad. Now let's just put some toppings on. We're not gonna stir these in. These are just on the top. I'm gonna start with some dried cherries. Uh, if you don't have dried cherries, dried cranberries would do, or even fresh fruit. You could put some fresh chopped apple in your salad. The, the purpose is just to add a little bit of sweet to your salad. 
Next we'll add some feta cheese. Cheese is gonna add a little creamy salty bite in with the sweet and the fresh crisp vegetables. I think it's a, cheese is a really good addition to a salad. I'm using BioLife vegan feta cheese here, uh, but you can use any cheese you want, regular feta, shredded cheddar cheese, Monterey Jack, just a little something to add that savory, salty cheese flavor to your salad. And last I'm going to put in some microgreens. Um, I've got some red rambo radish and some purple kohlrabi mic microgreens and we're just going to sprinkle those on the top. Just a little delicate, almost a garnishy finish to your salad. Beautiful. Because it was a cold winter day, we served this salad with a homemade chicken noodle soup that we had simmering on the stove all day. And that's it for day one. Welcome to day two with eight tomatoes remaining. Today we're going to make stewed zucchini with yellow squash and tomatoes. We're gonna start by uh, dropping the tomatoes into some boiling water and we'll let them bounce around in the water until their skins begin to crack. And we will immediately remove them from the boiling water and drop them into an ice water bath. The ice water will stop the cooking process and cool them down enough for us to handle when it's time to peel them. Uh, but for now, we will set them aside in the ice water and begin the prep on the rest of the vegetables. We'll start with crushing three garlic cloves. Remove the peels. Then we're going to chop the three garlic cloves into uh, a pretty fine mince. Uh, this is going to take a little while, so with the magic of video, we're going to skip ahead and just like magic, there they are. A very nice fine mince. This is going to give us a nice distribution of that garlic flavor in our dish. So let's go ahead and pick those up, set them aside. And then we can get started with our onion. Take off both ends. Cut the onion in half. And then take that half and cut quarter inch, half inch slices. Give it a turn and then cut the whole thing in half again. Set that aside and do the other half. half and then quarter inch slices. Next we will start on the yellow squash. Cut off both ends of the yellow squash. Then cut it into manageable size pieces. Cut in half lengthwise. Cut those pieces lengthwise. Give them a turn and then cut into half inch slices again. What we're trying to do is make um, a uniform sizes. So you'll see that all of the vegetables that we're cutting up, we're trying to cut into approximately the same sizes so that they will cook at the same rate and be ready at the same time. Okay, let's we'll set the yellow squash aside. We do have some herbs to, to cut up. We've got some oregano. We'll smooth, remove the oregano from the stems. Grab the fresh basil and remove those from the stems as well. Roll it up and then we're going to just slice that into really fine little ribbons of herb flavoring. Uh, if you want to use dried herbs, if you don't have fresh herbs on hand, dried herbs are going to work just fine in this dish because we will be simmering it for a few minutes. So don't worry if you don't have fresh herbs. I just happen to have some fresh herbs growing in my kitchen, but dried herbs will be just fine. Okay, and now with the zucchini, just like the yellow squash, we're going to cut off both ends. Cut it in the middle somewhere into a manageable size piece. Cut lengthwise. Cut those pieces lengthwise. Give it a turn. 
and half to a quarter inch slices. Just keeping your pieces uniform throughout. We'll finish up with the last of the zucchini. Lengthwise pieces, turn them, half inch slices. Feel free to make your slices bigger or smaller. It doesn't matter as long as they are uh, uniform in size. Lay down a paper towel and pull your tomatoes out of the ice water bath and the skin will just peel off with your fingers. You don't need a knife. Just take off the, the skin, it should slide right off. You can achieve this same effect with putting your tomatoes in a hot oven for a few minutes then pull them out and put them in a Ziploc bag, let them steam for a minute, and the uh, skins will peel off just the same. In fact, if you wanted to, you could do that with all of your vegetables. You don't need to peel your zucchini or your squash, but if you put them in the hot, uh, hot oven to roast for a few minutes when you do the tomatoes, you would get a nice roasted vegetable flavor in your dish as well. I chose not to do that for this, maybe just keeping it simple. Go ahead and slice your tomatoes now. We're going to cut them, cut the core out, but we're also going to then half inch, quarter inch slices. Kind of similar to the onion process, actually. There you go. Quarter inch slices, give it a turn, cut it down the middle. And then uh, repeat this with the other tomatoes. And you are done with the prep. So we're gonna go ahead and heat up a pan with some olive oil and start cooking with our onions. Go ahead and add the onions to the pan. Let's get them seasoned with a little salt, a little pepper. I'm using kosher salt, you can use table salt, whatever is your favorite salt to use. Doesn't matter here. Give those a stir. We're gonna saute those until they are tender and becoming transparent. And then we will add some crushed red pepper. I've got maybe half a teaspoon here. I'll put it, it's not gonna make the dish hot and spicy. It's just going to add a nice uh, depth of flavor. So we'll let that simmer, throw in some garlic. You want to kind of keep the garlic moving around. You don't want to burn it, but just saute the garlic until it starts to smell fantastic. People will start turning up from all parts of the house to see what's cooking because the, that garlicky smell is starting to get around the house. Next, let's just put in all the vegetables at once. Give them a quick stir, get them all well combined. Look at those beautiful colors going to add the herbs on top of that. Season this layer also, a little bit of salt. A couple of grinds of crushed red pepper. And then a can of tomato sauce. About a 15 ounce can is what you're looking for. And this is going to add the liquid that we need to stew these tomatoes and a squash. Go ahead and stir that together. Then we'll add, oh, maybe teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of honey, and about the same amount of balsamic vinegar. We're adding a little sweet and a little acid to, to balance out the flavors of your dish. So we're going to let that simmer until the sauce becomes reduced and thickened and bubbly and the vegetables are looking nice and tender. Then the next step is adding a little bit of Parmesan. 
as you can see, I did not have very much Parmesan. I did just a little corner of my Parmesan wedge left. If you have more than that, feel free to add more, but I'm getting every little shred out of this chunk that I can. And don't be afraid to put that last little piece as it, as it is right into your dish and let it, just let it melt in and add some cheesy goodness. Next, we're going to add some mozzarella cheese. We're not stirring this in, we're just putting this all on the top. I'm using VioLife Vegan Mozzarella Shreds, but if dairy's not a problem for you, go ahead and add whatever cheese you want. You can even use cheddar. If you don't have mozzarella on hand, cheddar works just fine and it makes a delicious dish as well. So let's season this last layer with a little bit of salt. and also a little bit of pepper as well. And then we just have to turn off the heat, cover the pan until give the cheese a minute to melt, and you are good to go. We served it with some barbecue chicken and a baked potato. What a great meal. Made it to day three. We have five tomatoes remaining. We're gonna use two of those in a delicious caprese salad. We'll start with our two tomatoes. We're going to slice them in about quarter inch slices. This salad is uh, a great appetizer. It's light, it's refreshing, and it's very healthy. I think you're gonna love it. We used it this day as an appetizer, uh, but you could also put it on the side of a plate. Delicious. Now we're going to slice some fresh mozzarella. You really need fresh mozzarella for this. Um, if you absolutely don't have it or can't get it, you could use a regular block of mozzarella and slice it up. Um, but really, whenever you can, you wanna get the fresh mozzarella. Uh, we're just making quarter inch slices just like we did with the tomatoes and don't worry if it crumbles a little bit um, those are the tasting bits you're gonna want those those are delicious now we're going to just arrange the slices alternating between tomatoes and mozzarella along the plate I'm doing it at an angle from corner to corner you can do it uh, in any design that you want just alternate back and forth get those bright reds uh, contrasting with the whites on the plate. There you go, almost got it. Just a couple more. Okay, then I've got one slice of cheese left. Yeah, I think if I trim it down, I can use this one on the very front. There we go. Clean it up just a little bit. Okay, isn't it pretty? All right, let's add some more color with some fresh basil. Just roll it up like we did before and slice it in thin ribbons. Really, you want fresh basil on this over dried if you absolutely have fresh basil or can get it. And we're just going to arrange this uh, on the plate. Just whatever looks good to you. One more piece. There we go. Okay, we're almost done. We're going to dress it with just a drizzle of extra virgin olive oil, not too much, just a drizzle. And look at that, even adds a little more bright color to it. Season it with some salt and some pepper. And you are done. We served this as an appetizer with some shrimp cocktail, some cheese and crackers for some football game day snack. Okay, it's day four. We have three tomatoes remaining, and we are going to make a TBLT, a turkey, bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich. And I'm gonna tell you the secret to good turkey bacon. It's 
just adding a little bit of fat. Normally you might just spray the pan, but for this we're going to add a couple of tablespoons, maybe just a tablespoon, we'll see, of uh, duck fat. Trust me, duck fat is the secret if you've been eating regular bacon all your life and suddenly find yourself only allowed to eat turkey bacon, you just add a little duck fat. Did I say it was healthy? No, I did not. Uh, I wouldn't say it is healthy, but it's delicious and nobody eats bacon because it's healthy. So we're just doing this, we're putting on the duck fat, let's let it melt into the pan. Once the pan is coated with the fat and melted, let's go ahead and lay in our bacon. Bacon is going to shrink down about 20%. You want to keep your heat low, um, no higher than medium because it, the ends tend to burn if you get your pan too hot. So we're going to cook it medium low, no higher than medium, and just let them cook. We'll keep turning once they start to brown. And here's what we're looking for. Um, you're starting to get some caramelized edges. It's looking nice and sizzly. This is about as much as they're gonna shrink down. They won't get much smaller than this. And we've got a piece ready to pull out. This is what it looks like, or at least what I consider done for my bacon. You can keep cooking it and make it a little crisper and darker if you want. But I'm gonna go ahead and lay this out on a paper towel to drain, finish up the rest of the pieces, and then I'll start toasting my bread. I went ahead and used a pastry brush and brushed the drippings from the baking pan onto this griddle and I buttered one side of the bread with uh, country crock plant based butter. I don't butter the inside, you can if you want to, I just do one side. And I'm just going to let these toast until I have some nice grill marks on the, the grilled side of the bread. Then I'll flip it, warm up the other side, I'm not toasting the other side, I'm just warming it up a little bit and then I'm gonna pull them off of the grill and start assembling our sandwiches. I've already prepared the lettuce and sliced the tomatoes. We've got our bacon ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and place my bread uh, grill mark side down on a plate and add some mayonnaise. Um, you can do vegan mayonnaise, regular mayonnaise, whatever mayonnaise you can eat. Just go ahead and coat the inside of the bread with the mayonnaise. Then we can layer on the vegetables. Actually, I'm going to let the lettuce be on the bottom because tomatoes are a little bit wet and I don't want to have soggy bread. So put down a little lettuce blanket, then a layer of tomatoes, salt and pepper, the tomatoes if you want. And then go ahead and get your bacon layer. Okay, and there we go. You can put mayonnaise on that other side of the top bread if you like as well, but otherwise we are done. A delicious TBLT. Welcome to day five, one tomato remaining. Let's make a tomato and cucumber salad to go with our meal. We're gonna use tomatoes, onions, cucumbers, some leftover bacon, dill, vinegar, salt, pepper, and honey. Let's start by chopping up our tomatoes. I'm squeezing out a little bit of the seeds. You don't have to do that. I'm just squeezing out a little bit, not being too meticulous. Um, get the tomatoes added to the bowl. And then let's start cutting up our cucumber. We'll cut off the end, and then we'll cut our cucumber lengthwise in half, roll it, and lengthwise in half again. Give it a turn, and then just cut bite-sized pieces. I'm trying to match more or less the size of tomatoes that I cut. cucumbers go into the bowl and now our onion cut it in half cut one half of it into thirds 
turn it and then take some thin slices. We don't want to overpower the salad with the onion, we just want to add a little bit of flavor. So we're making really thin slices and small bite pieces. Maybe one more slice. Stir it all to combine. Oh, we're looking pretty good. Looks like we can pretty much evenly distribute the ingredients we have in here so far. Um, so let's move on to some dill. I'm using fresh dill. If you don't have fresh dill, dried dill weed is just fine. Um, if that's what you have on hand, go ahead and use that. And that will work just fine because you're going to let the salad marinate to let the flavors blend throughout. So dried dill weed will be fine. I just happen to have some fresh. Okay, the dill weed is in the bowl. And I had some bacon left over from our turkey bacon lettuce and tomato sandwich. So let's slice up some chunks of turkey bacon to add to this salad. And I'm just kind of making chunks similar to the pieces I've already put in. So maybe just a little bit less than a quarter inch pieces. bacon into the bowl. Season it with some salt and some pepper. Add about two tablespoons of distilled white vinegar and about a teaspoon of honey. Just a splash of olive oil. Then mix it really well. Make sure all of the vegetables are coated with the liquids that we added. And then we'll let this marinate for 10 or 15 minutes. I serve this alongside some macaroni and cheese and some turkey smoked sausage. And we made it. We used up all of the tomatoes in five days and five easy side dishes. I learned a lot and I have five new go-to meals when I have tomatoes on hand. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned as much as I did. Um, you will find the full recipes on my blog, susanbyathread.com. The link will be in the description. If you try these recipes or if you have any ideas, hints, tricks, tips, uh, please share them in the comments below or on my Susan by a Thread Facebook page. And uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification button if you want to be among the first to know when I post a new video. Thanks for watching and until next time, live, eat, and travel safe.